Hi, today we're going to add frost on a window in Photoshop. Hi, I've got this photo here. I'm going to show you the final result for this shot. This is what I already posted on my social media and in today's video I want to show you how I added that um, frost on the window. And I have to say that I do um, I do take actual frost on the window on that on, on that actual window. Sometimes in the morning when I wake up and I see that that it was very cold in the night, I can see the frost on it, and I usually take some some photos of the window at that moment. But usually when I have my sessions, they are rather in like later later um, hours of the day and. By that time, that frost is already gone. Um, so I just save overlays from that frost that I photographed in the morning and so that I can use it later. And I put some of those on my website for you. So I just have to go to my website, uh, here, um Here is the link to my website and then you make sure to change the language to English and you go for, for photographers and then you go to editing resources. And here you will find my frost overlays. So we're going to use one of those. And I already did some, uh, some editing to this photo. First of all, I'm going to show you the, the layers and I also uh, will record this full editing from the beginning all the way to the end, to the end uh, and that will be on my website in um, editing videos uh, collections. So the same the same location to go to editing videos collections and that will be in my uh, Lightroom and Photoshop collection because I'm doing something in Photoshop. So all right this is my already image in, in Lightroom. And so I had this image here and her eye was a little out of focus, but I loved her hands on that window. So I took the other image here, which was already also like nice, but I didn't have those hands, which I really liked. So I kind of combined those two together. And I had this, um, this is a part of the image taken on with the same window. I'm not, I don't have this, the whole image, but I, did a lot of those sessions in that window and on some we had that little candle uh, on the side. In this case I was just photographing my own uh, knees so I had no one inside this little house to hold or just to make sure that the candle wasn't um, dropped by her or anything so I didn't want to risk it so I just decided to take the candle from some of my previous um, previous shots. And then we've got, and I just straightened this up a little, so I got this copy of those layers and uh, straightened up a little. And now we're going to get to uh, the moment where I add those uh, frost overlays. So if you already been on my website and then you already downloaded some of my overlays, I'm, got, I'm going to show you how those look like. So those are my frost overlays. And some of them are more um, digital type of files. I'm just going to click here and open a new one, new window for you. Okay, so I'm going to see those here. So some of those are more uh, digital type of um, frost which I did uh, in Photoshop for you and some of those will be more of my um, actual photos of uh... this really I wanted to make it a little bigger but it's so, so difficult to, to make it bigger right so we've got um, some of those are more digital type of um, uh, files and those are the real photos of the real frost uh, on those windows. I've got another one here, a couple more, and one here. So I think I'm going to use either of those. So those are real photos of a real frost on the window. 
and I already added those to my libraries in Photoshop. If you don't have that libraries here, I recommend that you go to window and go to libraries and click that libraries on and just put it somewhere on the side because it's very convenient to have those just in Photoshop. It's going to make it so much quicker for you to put out that on your um, images. If you don't have that, you just have to uh, go to that little window and you just kind of drag and drop it onto your photo. I'm going to do this like, like that. So I've got my overlay here and um, I'm pretty happy with this, but this is, um, if I put it like this, it's just going to be on her face. So I think that I would like to flip this so that first is actually above her head. And once you put your overlay to Photoshop, it's going to show those blue lines and those white corners, which allows you to make it bigger or smaller. But if you already click this, um, and you don't have those uh, lines anymore, all you have to do is just either go to edit and click transform and like scale, for example, it's going to bring those back or just click command or control T like transform on your keyboard. And then I can click right click on the photo uh, on this little image and then I'm going to flip this vertical. Okay, I can put this, put this where I want this to be, somewhere over here, make it bigger. Right. Okay, and enter or click there to, to um, so set this to put it on, on, on the image. And then we're going to change the blending mode from normal to screen. You will find the blending modes just above your layers and try screen. Screen looks good. There are a couple of things I can um, fix over here. It's uh, mostly the fact that it's actually going a little over the, the frame of the window and it's going a little over her face. So I will use a layer mask to remove some of that. To create a layer mask, you just have to click the little icon as like a rectangle with a circle inside. It's going to create a white mask. Means white mask means is the layer is visible. If the layer mask was black, it would be invisible. So if you want to hide anything on that layer, all you have to do is just paint black on this layer mask. So I just um, chose my brush tool and then I have this black color on top. So if you if your top color is white, you have to just click X on your keyboard or just change it to black. And my settings are I usually I usually work with soft brushes like in this case. And then I've got opacity to 100 and flow to 25. I also have a video on the difference between opacity and opacity and flow. So you can just go scroll down to through my videos and you will find it uh, on my channel channel. And then I'm just going to paint over those parts of that um, overlay, which I don't want this image. I usually toggle that, that uh, layer on and off just to make sure that I remove everything that I wanted to remove. And then I will just go a, a little uh, uh, on the edge to make sure that there is no frost on the actual window frame. Okay, so it's, it's looking better, but there are a couple of things. It still doesn't look very natural. It doesn't look like it was actually there. So we need to tweak that a little. And I was thinking about the color. I always think about the color and the brightness of the, of the overlay. Uh, if you look at the actual, um, of the original image, it's, um, those are two colors of the light. One color is coming from this, there's a, um, a lamp over there that's giving that pretty nice and warm and soft light. And there's also a soft light, like more of a bluish color, which is coming from uh, behind me, where I was actually standing outside. And the sky that was above me was giving that little blue light on her face, which is mostly visible on that snow. And um, I think that the frost on the window would actually have more of a bluish color from the sky that was behind me. 
So uh, to make changes to the color, you can go and click Command L on your keyboard. That's going to take you to Levels. And in this case, actually right now I, I have this uh, layer mask on. I need to click on the actual layer. And click Command L. That's going to take you to Levels. And change the blend um, the the channel to one of those three colors. I'm going to change it to blue. And let me see where if I move it right here, it's going to be more yellow. If I move it here, it's going to be more blue. But it also gets that little bit of a purple tone. Uh, to make it less purple, I need to go to red channel and move that to this side and it's going to make it more blue. Okay, it seems a little more saturated than I want wanted, so you can always um, change the saturation, but I think the best way to be actually go down, I'll turn uh, down uh, the opacity. Let's go back to the levels and I'm going to try to fix that color again. Okay, it's too saturated, so I want to go to, uh, I will add a hue saturation layer. And I want to click this little thing. This is going to um, apply the settings only to that layer. I just want to move the saturation a little down to have it less saturated. Okay, you can always change the lightness. In this case, if you make it more Right, it's going to show the little haze around it. Okay, and it's almost looking good, but still too saturated. I want it to be a little brighter. Okay. And um, one thing that doesn't work for me is that the window frame is a little out of focus. And um, so that, so, so that frost should be. Because it's right now it's more in focus than the actual window frame and doesn't look very natural. So I want to blur this a little. So we're going to click on the layer and go to filter, blur and add a Gaussian blur. I've got it set to two. Three. Um, Two and seven look good. Two point seven uh, pixel blur looks good. Okay, so we've got that first one, and I want to put another one on the second window, which is going to be a little faster because I already have those um, some experience with the previous one. Let's go to libraries, and I'm going to put maybe this one. Again, I want this to be flipped, so I right click on this and go to flip vertical. I want this to be smaller. To put it to screen and uh, Command L to bring the levels. I want to go to blue. Now this one was uh, easier than the previous one. Hue saturation is not where it should be. Hue saturation should be uh, linked to the other layer. 
which I right now I lost. Let's go to properties and then go and click here so it's added to this layer. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to apply this also to this one. So I copied that by clicking Command and J on my keyboard. And I'm going to also apply this to this one. So we have the same um, saturation level. And I'm going to move the opacity down to have this a little more opaque. Oops, not this one. To have that, that layer. Okay. And also I want to add that um, Gaussian blur. So I just have to go to Filter Blur. Uh, and I use the first option, so it just brings the preview, um, previously used filter. And it was Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to use the same radius as I was with the previous one. Okay, I'm really happy with, uh, with how it turned out. I also can add a layer mask and mask out the edges if you feel like there is something. Like in this case, I can see this little line. I'm not sure if you can, if you can see this on your screen, but I'm going to add a layer mask and then mask out, out anything that doesn't look very good. But the previous one, I'll, I also can see that. So I'm just going to go back to the previous mask and mask this out. And you can go over the edges. I'm not going to bore you with going over the edges and making sure that there is there are no harsh lines, that everything is nice and soft. And um, at last, I want to add a little um, light effect to this candle. I want to add a little like a star or like a light burst on it. And you can always, I can also find those light effects on my website. Just go to editing resources and you will find uh, here those light effects that I'm going to use right now. So let's just add a light effect here. I'm going to use star number two and I just drag and drop it here. Okay and then you, all you have to do is just change the blending mode to screen and I feel like it's a little too cold. Wait. Oh, I messed, messed up my filter here. Okay, so I got this little uh, star here and I feel like it's a little too cold and I want to add a, a filter on it. So I'm going to use the, the, I think the easiest for me, it was just camera roll filter and it has that slider with temperature and it makes it so, so, easy, so much easier to change the color of uh, like light or anything when you just use the temperature slider it's going to make it either more blue or cold or more yellow and warm you can always add some magenta tones and make it even uh, warmer so i want this to be nice and warm like a candle light and you'll see like how this changed and how easy that was i think it was way easier than using uh levels or uh or curves on in, in Photoshop um, but we actually probably depends on what you're used to doing I find this this way to be so much easier okay so I'm going to uh, group the layers that I just did so command G to group everything and then I can turn it off and on to show you all the all the uh, adjustment that we added I can see that there is a little bit I can remove but I'm not going to bore you with just removing some some details. Uh, I just want to, to have the basic idea how to add that frost on the window. And um, I hope you enjoy that. And I would love to, uh, to see you there. Um, comment, a like, or subscribe to my channel. And um, you are welcome on my website, just check my videos. I've got my videos on how I edit my photos from the raw file to the final result uh, in Lightroom and in Photoshop. And um, yeah, I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.